Since COVID, America has been hit with a number of unparalleled events that have shaken it to the core. It's still standing, but many fear a fall is coming because of a myriad of situations that have stretched it thin. Economists, think tanks, and a number of news commentators and religious figures have warned of America's downfall if it stays on its recent path. This is a big deal, what you're living through. And not just you, but the entire West. These, these exact issues mirror those throughout the Anglosphere. That would include the United States and the UK and Australia and New Zealand. These trends are present in all of those countries at exactly the same time. They are on the brink of becoming not salvageable. So the question is, is America salvageable or is it unsalvageable? Let's look at some facts and survey some of the changes that have occurred over the last few years. Conservatively speaking, 5 million illegal immigrants have crossed the southern border of America. As they arrive, they are processed, they're given clothes and money, then bus to one of our large cities. There's no budget, there was no plan for any of this, and the effects have been devastating. Cities like New York, Chicago, San Francisco, and Denver say they can't afford the influx of people who have no jobs, no place to stay, and no ability to take care of themselves when they arrive unexpectedly. City budgets are being busted, resident benefits are being cut, the plight of homelessness is a spectacle and a problem. And now we learn that even the healthcare system is being taxed as people get sick but have no ability to pay for services. Significant tax increases are on the horizon. Adding to the concern is the identity of those coming across the border. Immigrants from anti-American nations like Iran and other Middle Eastern nations, China and Russia, are coming across, raising fears that increased terror incidents and increased violent crime will be the result. National security concerns are being raised. Inflation has been a concern for the last several years, and despite the Federal Reserve's efforts to control it, it continues to be a factor affecting millions of lives. While the government's official inflation rate looks somewhat reasonable, when you consider that gas, food, rent, and utilities are not included in that calculation, many are citing they can no longer make ends meet. The American dream that motivated so many is disappearing, and young Americans are left disillusioned and disheartened when they look at their futures. Hope is fading for many. It reminds us of a popular proverb that says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Violent crimes, rage, Mass shootings and other concerns threaten the peace and safety of America, and the education system with the woke mentality that is being taught in many universities and schools is a threat to young people and to the family. Every sociologist and historian will tell you that strong societies are built on strong family structures. God created mankind to be in a family relationship with a mom and dad who teach and exhibit morality and a healthy lifestyle. Our society is abandoning that in favor of a system that cannot succeed. With all that is going on, America finds itself in the middle of two proxy wars, one with Russia and the other with the Middle East and Iran. Billions of dollars have been sent to support these wars, crippling an economy that is already living on life support. Economists predict that the lavish spending cannot continue and that a fall could happen at any time. When the American economy fails, the world will be plunged into the unknown and a time of complete chaos and poverty could engulf the entire world. I could go on, but the question is, considering all this, is America salvageable? Well, maybe, but some things are going to have to change and they're going to have to change fast. And it will take the entire American public to embrace that change. Maybe it is too late for America to turn around, but it's not too late for you. Stick with me and listen to these words from God who has the answers to our problems and for your life. Listen, God tells us, if we would just listen. First, we must realize and acknowledge that our blessings have come from God. There is no other reason than that. Former great presidents like Abraham Lincoln acknowledged that, and he made a very sobering statement in relation to what happens when we forget the source of our blessings. 
He said this in 1863, We have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us. Those are words our leaders should be saying to us today. God has blessed America. You simply can't deny it. There is a reason America has been blessed. The Bible tells us why this happened. It was no accident. And the Bible also tells us what happens when a nation that has received these blessings turns from God and chooses to ignore and reject Him as America has. Notice these verses. Begin in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, God says, if you don't obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all His commandments and His statutes which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Verse 20, the Lord will send on you cursing, confusion, and rebuke in all that you set your hand to do until you are destroyed because of the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken me. Verse 21, speaking of our national health with costs rising through the roof, God says, the Lord will make the plague cling to you until he has consumed you from the land which you are going to possess. Verse 25, he will cause you to be defeated before your enemies, and you shall become troublesome to all the kingdoms of the earth. And in verses 43 and 44, he says, The foreigner who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower. He shall lend to you, but you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. You can read those verses for yourself in the Bible. God says these things will happen. The words are harrowing, but they are true, and they are beginning to happen before our very eyes. Is America salvageable? Yes, there is a way. But everyone in this nation, including our leaders, would have to acknowledge it and do this from their hearts. Listen to this heartening and beautiful verse from a loving God who wants people to enjoy the blessings of life, but they must follow the principles of life that he has established. In 2 Chronicles 7, in verse 14, he says this, If my people, who are called by my name, and remember that America used to acknowledge God with phrases like, in God we trust, one nation under God, God bless America. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. The answer to our problems in life is in turning to God and Jesus Christ. Do you want peace of mind? Do you want a purpose in life and children who grow up to be productive and happy members of society? God has the answer. It's right here. All you have to do is listen to God and do it. Our leaders need to acknowledge God and turn to Him too. Are they up to it? Or are they too proud and blind to see what is happening and why? While it may be too late for America to turn itself around, it's not too late for you. It's time to stop listening to this world. Do you see happiness and purpose among your friends? Do you see a future in America or this world or where it's headed? Young people, you say you want to change. Do you really want to change and have a great life that is happy, fulfilling, and purposeful, in which you can achieve your potential? The universities aren't teaching it. They don't have the answers. Our government and our leaders don't have the answers. The answers we must face it are only with God. He is the only Savior. It's time to repent and to understand God. Put your trust in Him, and not in man or any institution of man, 
Only God has your best interest at heart. Let's look at these verses in Joel 2, verses 13 and 14. Return to the Lord your God, he says, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Who knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him. Is America salvageable? There's a way, but it is doubtful America can or would do it. We have just strayed too far from God and have become blinded by our own pride. Your life, stability, and happiness are salvageable, but you have to do something about it. You can't just wait for things to happen. Grab hold of your life and make something happen. Start with getting to know God and turning to Him. Turn to Him. You can find happiness and purpose, but you have to look for it and not just wait for it to happen. Open your Bible and receive the words of life, joy, and purpose. To learn more, go to ucg.org and type in, what is your future or the way to happiness?